Hi, I'm Bill Hodak with New Relic, the all-in-one web application performance management company. In this video, I will provide an introductory tutorial on how to get up and running with New Relic and how to solve a common application performance problem. So let's get started. After you've signed up for a New Relic account, you need to deploy the New Relic agent into your application. In this example, we will be using a Ruby application called JS Blogger. You can see the instructions for installing the Ruby agent in the browser. The first step is to add the New Relic gem to your gem file. So let's do that in our terminal window. First, I add the New Relic gem to my gem file and save it. Then, I do a bundle install and verify that the New Relic RPM gem is there. Next, I need to download the New Relic YAML file. I'll move that from my download directory into my application's config directory. If your application is already running, you will need to restart it. In my case, the app isn't running yet, so I'm just going to start it. Next, I'll check out my sample application, JS Blogger, and make sure we are connecting to New Relic. And there you go. You can see in the console that our app is successfully connecting and sending data to the New Relic service. Now we'll go back to the New Relic application and make sure that the JS Blogger application is available. And there it is, listed in my application list. I'll click on the app and navigate to the application overview screen. As you can see, the charts are empty right now. That's because I'm using a test application that doesn't have any users or data yet. I'm going to run a load test against the JS Blogger app to generate some load. I'll use Apache Bench, which is part of the Apache HTTP server. In this first run with Apache Bench, I configure it to make 15 requests to generate some production-like traffic against the app. Right now, my application is running pretty slowly, which is intentional, so that I can show you how to use New Relic to solve a common performance problem. I'll skip ahead to get to the final results. The Apache bench test has completed, and you can see that the app server's response time is about three seconds, which indicates to me that the app needs some serious tuning. Now back in New Relic's application overview screen, you can see that the overview chart is showing the application server response time broken down by component with the database consuming most of the time. Next, I'll take a look at my application's app deck score, which is an industry standard way for measuring the user satisfaction for an application. New Relic customers set the app deck's response time threshold and use their app deck score to monitor their service level agreements. The app deck score has dropped significantly. With this app, I am targeting a response time of half a second. But with a current response time of three seconds, the app deck score tells me that my end users are now frustrated with the app's performance. Let's dig deeper by clicking on the yellow area of the chart that will let us see what's going on with the database. You can see there are just three distinct database calls being made by this app. Taking 96% of the time, the SQL select statement is clearly the problematic query. If you click on that SQL statement, you can get more details, such as throughput and calls per minute, and response time. You can also see what application is calling that SQL statement, which in this case is the dashboard controller show action. Next, I'll go into diagnostics to see a full transaction trace for the dashboard controller show action. The summary view provides a nice visual representation of where time is being spent in each component of this transaction. This trace summary confirms that the SQL select statement is the primary area for us to focus on. Let's get even more detail so we know exactly why this statement is a problem. By clicking on the Trace Details tab, I get a full transaction trace of the Dashboard Controller Show action. The color coding of the transaction trace details helps you quickly identify where the bottleneck is. As suspected, the SQL Select statement is where we are seeing a lot of red, indicating it is indeed the problem. You can see the actual SQL code by clicking on the database icon. One thing I notice is that our application is making a lot of similar SQL calls. In this case, it is a count star query that is counting the number of comments for each blog article. In total, we have over a thousand calls to this one SQL statement. This query, which is the primary bottleneck in the app, is trying to determine the most popular article based on the number of comments. The app then displays the most popular blog article. This app has over a thousand blog articles, so you can see that we are making this SQL select query for each article. 
Now that I know the problem, I'm going to jump into my app source code and fix it. In my application's article model, I see that the most popular method is causing the massive number of SQL calls. I fix that by replacing the code with a single group by query that only needs to execute once and returns the most popular article. Now that this logic is handled in a single query, we should see some improvement in performance. I've run Apache Bench again with the optimized code so we can verify our improvements. Let's take a look at New Relic's overview chart again to see how we did. And wow, you can see that we've made a huge performance improvement. The application response time is down from over three seconds to about half a second now with the optimized code. The database component has clearly been improved and our AppDex score is returning to a value that indicates our users are now satisfied with the performance of our application. Well, that concludes this brief tutorial on how to get started with New Relic and how to troubleshoot an application performance problem. I hope you've enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.